Four years ago, when Google introduced the $1,300 Chromebook Pixel, it was laughable to spend that much money on a Chrome laptop, even if the hardware was both immaculate and powerful. But a lot has changed since then. Take the new Google Pixelbook, for example. It's still expensive, starting at $999, but its hardware and software are significantly different than what Google has offered in the past. For the first time, Google's expensive Chromebook might actually be worth your money. Judged just on its hardware, the Pixelbook would be a no-brainer for almost anyone looking for a thin and light laptop. Like the original Chromebook Pixel, the Pixelbook is a very solidly built aluminum laptop with an excellent keyboard and high-resolution touch display. The computer looks nothing like the Pixel that preceded it. It's not the thinnest and lightest computer out there, but at 2.4 pounds and 10.4 millimeters thin, it's in the ballpark. Much like Apple's MacBook and the Surface Pro, it's the kind of computing device that you can take basically anywhere you want without thinking about it. It's just as nice to use as it looks, too. The Pixelbook's 12.3-inch screen is bright and crisp, and the touch response is solid as well. The computer features a very strong hinge for 360-degree flip features, so you can use the Pixelbook as a tablet or in a more cinematic display mode. But perhaps the most surprising aspect is its keyboard. There's only 0.8 millimeters of travel in the keys, but it feels far more comfortable than the thin butterfly keys on Apple's MacBook lineup. They're soft, but not squishy, and very quiet to type on. And the keyboard is even backlit. The Pixelbook continues the tradition of Google offering the most powerful Chrome hardware around. The base $999 model includes a 7th generation quad-core i5 processor, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of storage, the most I've ever heard of on a Chromebook. You can step up to an i7 processor, 16GB of RAM, and up to 512GB of storage, which is frankly insane, but all this power should help keep it future-proof. Unfortunately, these specs also take a toll on the battery. Google claims up to 10 hours of usage, but I only got 8 hours in our video playback test. When putting the laptop through my normal work routine, it lasted just over 6 hours. That's fine, I guess, but it's a definite step down from the previous Pixel laptop. Like many new Chromebooks, the Pixelbook can run Android apps. It seems silly that Android and the Google Play Store need this type of hardware to run smoothly, but the Pixelbook runs these apps much better than in any other Chromebook I've tried thus far. Before, I looked at Android apps as a curiosity, or a way to run one specific piece of software if all else failed, but on the Pixelbook, Android apps are both more stable and run faster. You're still probably better off using web apps first, particularly for most of Google's services. But if you want to take things offline, there are now plenty of good options. Spotify and Google Play Music ran well, both online and offline. As for movies, Netflix and Google Play Movies both worked when I wanted to watch things away from Wi-Fi. Most games I tried, including Asphalt 8, Alto's Adventure, Badland, and Stranger Things, ran just fine as well. Some developers have even started optimizing their apps for the Pixelbook and its bigger screen. Like several other recent Chromebooks, the Pixelbook supports a pressure and tilt-sensitive stylus. In this case, it's the $99 Pixel Pen. Sadly, it's an additional accessory that's not included, so think hard about whether you'll actually use it much. Google promised extremely low latency when using the pen, but so far it's been a bit of a mixed bag. Some apps, like the beta of the Squid note-taking service, live up to Google's promises. It might be the fastest note-taking app I've used, but I've tried a handful of other drawing and sketching apps, including Art Canvas and Painter, and performance isn't nearly as good. Even Google's own Keep app shows significant lag when I'm writing. Fortunately, the pen is good for other things besides art and taking notes. The Pixelbook pen has a button built in that lets you activate the Google Assistant. You can circle any part of your screen and the Assistant will automatically pull up information based on what you highlighted. It's not terribly hard to confuse the Assistant if you don't choose a clear image, but it's still a fun and useful trick. Speaking of the Google Assistant, the Pixelbook is the first laptop with it built right in. In addition to using the pen, you can say OK Google or just hit a dedicated Assistant button on the keyboard to call it up. If you say OK Google, you can continue speaking and the Assistant will respond out loud. If you type, it'll just show you text responses. If you've used the Assistant on Google Home or a recent Android smartphone, you know exactly what to expect. The ultimate question surrounding the Pixelbook is whether or not you should spend $1,000 on a Chromebook. Based purely on the quality and power of the hardware, it's worth what Google is asking. The combo of design and specs make this laptop a serious contender, but there's the issue of Chrome OS. In the past, we praised the Pixel laptop's hardware, but said that almost no one should actually buy it. But now, I truly believe that there's a substantial part of the market that would be very happy with a Pixelbook as their primary computer. Chrome OS has matured a lot over the years, and stable, responsive Android apps mean you no longer have to live your life only in the browser. For some people, photo and video editors in particular, the Pixelbook won't make sense. But for nearly everyone else, it's a computer that merits some real consideration.